Hi everyone, I'm Nina and welcome to my channel where I post weekly tutorials, art experiments and art vlogs for you to enjoy and improve your skills. And in this video, I will show you how to blend because blending is something that will really lift your art. So today I will show you six different tools for blending and therefore six different ways of blending. So watch this video till the end to find out which one is actually the best. And remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And let's finally start. So here are all six blending tools I'll be talking about today. It's a cute tip or a cut and swap, a soft tissue like the one we use when our nose is running, a piece of cloth, this one is uh, the most ordinary cleaning remedy, a blending stump, a brush and a finger. Yes, it's also a blending tool and it's worth mentioning. So we will talk more about every single tool in a minute, I just need to sketch a few apples so we could see how all those tools work when you actually draw and blend. So let's start our little experiment and see what works best and what um, just works and what doesn't work at all. I just took an edge pencil and I will just sketch six apples that will represent six different blending tools and that's kind of it. Also when I will be blending those apples I will be using uh, only two graphite pencils, one is H, the one I'm using right now for sketching and another one is B and uh, maybe I will also use a black pencil but it's only a little bit you know. So I've just catched six apples real quick and the first tool I'll be testing is a finger. Everyone hopefully has a finger, uh, maybe even ten, so let's see if a finger can help to create a smooth and nice blending. I'm starting shading using an H pencil. And then I'm using my little finger to blend the graphite. Of course you can use any finger, I just think that this apple is uh, pretty small and the smallest finger is the little finger, so that's why I decided to use exactly the little finger. And what can I say? It actually works! Yes, guys, it would have been a great blending tool if there wasn't one little thing. And the thing is sweat and grease. You see, we sweat and it's super easy to ruin the drawing if you use your fingers to blend the pencil. The other thing why I don't recommend using your fingers to blend is the fact that your fingers get dirty, which is pretty much obvious and you can ruin not only your drawing, you can also ruin your clothes, your table and other surfaces. Other than that, you can see yourself that it actually works, it blends, so of course you can use your finger if you don't have anything else, but once again, I really don't recommend doing that. And one more thing, when I'm trying to blend between the layers of graphite using my little fingers, you kind of can see that I 
not on purpose but i am getting beyond the contour of the apple i mean i'm trying to blend inside but it somehow goes like beyond the contour so i think it's also like a minus because it makes your work looks crazy by the way guys i will be really happy to see you on my instagram because i post a lot of things there, you know, even like my everyday life, uh, my commissions behind the scenes, my digital paintings, my cat miss uh, little videos. So if you're just curious to see more, you're very welcome there. And the next blending tool I'm using is a cotton swap. This was the first thing I ever used for blending. I think everyone has cotton swaps at home, so it's not a problem to take a few and just use them in your work. So after applying the first layer of graphite, I'm taking a cotton swab and making circular movements because I believe this is how you'll get uh, the best out of it. And I repeat this action uh, after every layer of graphite. swaps are really affordable and you don't need a lot to create a drawing also because you can reuse them again and again and sometimes it's even better to reuse the same swap because it already has some graphite leftovers so you can just use it to your advantage and just shade you know without using any pencils I mean So this is how the second apple looks like. I really liked that my fingers weren't dirty, but I still managed to blend without any fancy tools. But of course I'm not used to using those uh, cotton swabs, but it was nice to remember how I started. The third apple is going to be blended using blending stumps. I remember the day when I bought my first blending stumps and I felt so professional, but now I rarely use them. Only for little details such as eyes, jewelry or something like that, something really tiny. A little message for the ones who want to save a few bucks but still get a cool a blending tool, blending stump actually. I have a tutorial on how to create your own blending stump at home and everything you need is just like a piece of paper and a tape. That's it. So um, 
If you want to get like a really cool blending tool, check out that tutorial. The link will be in the description among all the other helpful links and it will pop up in your corner or there. I don't remember right now. When blending using a stamp, it's better to make circular movements. The tip of the stamp is pretty small, so it's hard to blend a big area, a big surface, and that's why I rarely use it. You can even see it right now, it doesn't blend very easily, so you have to spend more time to create a smooth surface. So uh, that's why I'd rather take something else and finish the work faster. By the way, a funny fact. I don't know why, but the blending stamp that I created myself blends a lot better than the one I bought at the store, because right now I'm using like two types of blending stamps, homemade and bought at the store. Maybe because I was using really soft paper to create it or something else, but really the one that I made blends a lot better, so I will definitely never buy blending stamps again. Why would I, right? Why would you? So this is how uh, our apple looks like. I think um, it's not blended super awesome, but it's kind of hard, as I said, uh, blending using a blending stamp. So let's move to the next apple. The next apple is gonna be blended with a piece of cloth. I have never ever tried this method before and I regret it so 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 much because it actually blends very well. I mean, look at this, it truly blended the pencil very nicely and fast. I can imagine using this tool for blending skin or hair or even objects or very big surfaces when you need to create like smooth shading blending. I have known that people use this kind of cloth for blending for a long period of time, but I've never wanted to give it a try. I wonder why. Do not do like me, guys. Go to your kitchen and cut off a little for your drawings. You will really like it. I really didn't expect such a wonderful result. Once again, I'm surprised how it blends every layer of graphite and I will definitely use it in the future. I mean, you can see yourself that the layer of graphite is really smooth with a good transition and soft edges and that's exactly what we need when we're blending, especially huge surfaces such as face or hair or something like that. So yeah, I will be using it. The next blending tool is a tissue, a soft tissue. It's just an ordinary tissue we all use from time to time and just like cloth, it really blends well too. The only difference, I think, it's easy to break this little tissue and that's it. Other than that, it blends as well as um, the previous blending tool, which is a cloth. Mm -hmm. 
I think it blends so well because it's pretty soft. It kind of has to be soft, otherwise it will irritate people's noses and that's what we don't need, right? So you can wrap it around your finger or just fold it and use it. I am surprised again, I must say, because soft tissue blends really, really well and I can imagine using it for some big areas as well. The last apple is going to be blended with a flat makeup brush. If you know me, you also know that this is the blending tool I use all the time. It's easy to control and it blends really, really well. Right now, I still think it's the best blending tool, but I will definitely use others, as I said. Often, like Really often, you don't even need to use pencils when using a brush for blending because once you used it, you always have leftovers of graphite on this brush so you can just use it to create a very smooth transition and soft edges. That's also one of the reasons why I use brushes all the time. Some people use uh, painting brushes for blending and I personally think it's a bad idea because they are long and soft. Flat makeup brushes are tightly packed and short so you can really control them. And since it's a makeup brush, you can obviously get it in any makeup store or online makeup store. I'm pretty sure it's not a problem to get a good one at all but i would recommend to like not buy anything online because you kind of need to feel and see how it is you know sometimes you can receive not exactly what you want to So I blended six apples using six different blending tools. Let's make some test drives one more time and sum up, of course. Do you see a huge difference between these apples? I don't. Doesn't mean you can use whatever you want to blend. It basically does. But it's up to you to decide if you want to be a little more efficient and clean. If you want to draw, you will use your finger to draw because you like it. But I do always say that having a decent tool is something that will make your work a lot more comfortable. I will never betray makeup brushes because I think these are the best for blending. But when I was in the beginning of my art journey, I was using Q-tips and I was pretty much satisfied with that. So guys, what do you use for blending? Write it down in the comment section. I will be really happy and curious to see. Anyways, thanks for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful for you and see you in the next video, guys. Bye!